welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. This is my podcast on knitting and crocheting and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and also my website newleafdesigns.nl where you can find all kinds of free and paid patterns, crochet patterns, knit patterns, a lot of them, like over 60 patterns I think now. Um, I will put all of the other things right down here where you can find me, such as the Ravelry podcast group. Um, yeah, I have a very exciting announcement to make because the Breeze Blocks crochet along has ended, which means that I will be drawing for the prize winner in this episode. And the Breeze Blocks crochet along was a crochet along from June 1st to September 1st. And um, it's for my pattern, the Breeze Blocks, Breeze Blocks shawl. Um, the name Breeze Blocks is inspired by one of my favorite songs, which is by Alt J, and it's called Breeze Blocks. And I just thought I came up with this stitch pattern, um, and it was just so airy, and you know, as a look like the little blocks I figured to call it breeze blocks anyway the cal has ended and many of you have participated and have crocheted beautiful shawls um, it was such a joy to see them and I will be trying for a prize um, in this episode and the prize for this lovely crochet along is a scapious whirl yarn cake so I've used Scape to Swirl for all of my Breeze Blocks shawls until now. This one is made using the Banana Cream High colorway. And there's a fun fact. Um, this colorway was actually made on accident. <laughs> Do you remember my colorway of the Archive yarn? I'll put in a picture right here. Um, we were surprise with the most glorious gift ever which is uh designing your own colorway and we were all so excited uh we meeting uh the scapies bloggers and um so we got out all kinds of paint chips and we uh cut and um um held them together and then mixed it all up again and so i chose several shades of um blue I'm really into purpley blues and um, I chose a beige and a yellowy kind of you know kind of creamy yellow um, so um, that became my our tribe colorway it's called new leaf um, but <laughs> when we were done with uh, picking out our colors um, they were put on a table uh, for pickup and um, I don't know how this happened, but they were sent not to the uh, factory where they make our tribe, but to the factory where they make Whirl. <laughs> so uh, it happens that um, some of the bloggers have their own Whirl colorway. And how cool is that? I mean, I love Sapie's Whirl. And the thing is that these, uh, the accidental colorways, they came out and uh, they didn't actually tell us that it was, you know, an accident. But, um, like, I instantly fell in love with this colorway without even knowing that I had designed it. <laughs> And uh, for the other bloggers, they were all also like, oh my gosh, these are, this is so perfect. These are totally my colors without knowing that they were literally their colors. So, oh, that was so funny when, um, when they actually told us the story and um, we found out about it. And it was just so funny. Um, yeah. And... So some of us have our own world colorways, which is awesome. So I couldn't help but bring a cake of banana cream high home. And um, yes, 
and I wanted to use it in a project. And now I have, oh, and I'm so in love with it. Yay. Okay, without further ado, um, did I tell what the prize was? Yes, one keg of Scapey Swirl, right? So the winner of the crochet along gets to pick their Scapey Swirl cake to be sent to them. And da -da 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 I have done a random number generator and the winning number was number two, the very first entry because post number one is mine and I don't count. So uh, post number two, which was by Yoke Kiwi Pashas. Gefeliciteerd! Congratulations! <laughs> um, congratulations on winning the crochet along and please get in touch with me. You can do that via this email address or um, send me a message on Ravelry and let me know which rural cake you would like to receive. <laughs> Thank you all so much for participating in the Breeze Blocks Crochet Along. It was so much fun and I am so looking forward to our next crochet along, which already starts October 1st. Oh my god, I gotta prepare! <laughs> so our next crochet along is about the Bree... No, not Breeze Blocks again. Chev Rainbow. The Chev Rainbow Blanket. Ta-da! Yes. I have it draped um, around my chair at the moment. So the Chev Rainbow blanket will be our next crochet along and I could not be more excited. This blanket has, has already been so, so loved. Uh, I loved making this. It was one of the most fun projects I've ever made. It's super easy um, but entertaining because you get to use a new color every row. Um, the pattern is up on my website for free, so you don't have to purchase a pattern to be able to um, participate in the cal. You don't have to uh, do the exact same color um, color scheme. You can use your own colors. That's totally fine. Um, but you know, it's just such a fun pattern, and I love making this with the Escapius. Stonewash and River Washed color pack, um, which I'm gonna show you in just a bit because I will be making a new one um, in some different colors. <laughs> uh, yes, so this crochet along will run from October 1st to February 1st. Um, so that's four months if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes, and I believe that will be enough time. <clears throat> I finished mine in two months. My mom finished hers within two months, um, yes, and it's, it's just really doable, it's such a nice project. You can do it while watching TV, while chatting with your friends, while watching podcasts, for example. Um, and, you know, with the holiday season coming up, you know, I'm... It is coming up, you guys. Um, I know it can be a stressful time for many, so this is gonna be a nice relaxing project. You can make it to gift to someone, but you can also make it for yourself. Um, or you can ask for the uh, yarn uh, for Christmas or for Santa Claus or whichever holiday you celebrate, and then you can still participate in the cow. Um, I do accept works in progress. So if you have already started your um, blanket and if you finish it from October 1st to February 1st, you will still be in the running. Um, you will still be able to participate in the cal. Um, yeah. So you'll just have to finish it within the uh, crochet long period. Um, so you will need one Scapius Stonewash and River Washed color pack, which is a huge box with 50 balls, 50 tiny, uh, 10 gram balls. Um, they're, you know, 50 different colors. Each ball is a different color. So each, uh, every other stripe uh, I did with the color pack. 
and in between those stripes you can see there are bigger uh, portions of just one color you see that so um, each stripe uses 10 grams right uh, well you'll have a little bit left over don't worry um, so this one for example is made with a 10 gram ball but then these five stripes one two three four five is made with one 50 gram ball uh, because Scapies also carries 50 gram balls of all of the colors um, so I picked 10 50 gram balls uh, to go with a color pack uh, to I have uh, listed all of the colors that I used in the blog post in the pattern and I will link it down below so you can find it and if you are uh, planning to uh, purchase the yarn for this please consider to shop via the affiliate links I've put in my blog post I have uh, put um, uh, Scapies retailers um, and a few different web shops where you can find this exact same yarn. I have uh, put a link directly to the Scapius Stonewashed and Riverwash color pack so you don't need to browse. Um, and if you shop via an affiliate link, um, it won't cost you anything extra, I promise. Um, uh, but in return for your purchase, I receive a little bit extra from the uh, shopkeeper. Um, it's, it's not a lot, but you know, every little bit helps. So if you're planning to purchase the yarn online, please consider to shop via those affiliate links. Um, yeah, so all of the yarn is listed in the blog post. And now let me show you which yarns I am planning to use for my second version. So for my second version, I'm also using a color pack. Ta-da! Only this one is the Scapius Stonewashed and River Washed XL color pack. I don't know if you can see that. It says XL on the label there. Um, so that means that the yarn is not uh, DK weight, but uh, a worsted or Aran. Um, yeah, I would say either, either a worsted or Aran. Um, I'm not too familiar with those terms, so please bear with me. But uh, it says needle size 5 millimeter, which is size 6 or 7 US. Yeah, so Worsted or Aaron. Um, yes, so it will be, uh, this is a little bit uh, thicker yarn than um, the yarn I originally used. So it also has less meterage. Um, so I will have to change the cast on uh, for the blanket, but the rest will probably will be the same. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get a head start on this so I can figure out the cast on uh, numbers. So if you want to start the crochet along with the XL pack instead of the regular pack, then you can do that. Um, I won't know the dimensions beforehand, I'm sorry, but um, you'll be able to crochet along with me. So I'm using this pack and 10 different colors uh, of the stone washed, or actually this is the river washed, escape piece river washed, 10 different colors, um, each in 50 gram ball. Um, yeah, and I will be making another double rainbow. So, oh my god, the yarn pack opened and all of the balls just, just fell out. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'll have fun cleaning that up later. So, I'm using 10 different colors of River Washed XL. And let me just show you... Um, which ones I am planning to use. Okay. So, as I said, I will be doing another double rainbow. And I think this was the order I wanted to go with. Fiddly. Okay. 
See, that looks nice. Nice rainbow. Okay, so I'm going to put them down again to be able to read the colorway numbers. Okay, so this will all be in the blog post as well. Um, this one is called T uh, or colorway number 976. Uh, all of these river washed uh, have river names. Um, this one is Po 955. I've lost a tag, but River Po, P O. Um, this one is Amazon, which is 991. This one is called Narmada. Haven't heard of that one yet. Narmada uh, 980. This one is Euro um, 977. And I really like this color. It's uh, ochre yellow with a kind of a silvery fluff. It is so nice. And I think a sweater of this would be amazing. But it doesn't really go well with my color. So anyway, just putting that out there. Um, this one is called Murray, which is 978. This one is Mersey, which is 979. Uh, Avon, Avon, 974. Beautiful red orangey color. Uh, this one, Isaac, Isaac, 975. And this one is Steinbus. Um, in 982. So this one and this one. These two are um, one of the uh, original River Washed Excel colors and the other ones are all new River Washed colors. So that's really fun. I always think it's so fun to use uh, new colors. So these have been added a couple of months back. I believe two months back. Yes, so brand new. And I'm so excited. So as I said, I'm going to get a head start on the um, blanket uh, just to get the cast on number correct. Uh, or cast on, you know what I mean. It's not really a term you use in crochet, but the, the crochet chain number. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna uh, figure out how many uh, double crochets I can do and then see how many chevrons that makes and how how many I should uh, put on the foundation chain um, yeah so I'm gonna get all set for October 1st when we start our crochet along together oh and of course as always the crochet along will be hosted in my Ravelry group which is called the new leaf podcast group I've already opened a thread so if you want to you know join in the chatter or show which colors you will be using then please go ahead and um, let us know all right let's get on to works in progress so I have been knitting a lot on my pink sweater um, and I can't remember if I finished the front already last time I think I had so you will already have seen this <laughs> Oh, fluff in my nose. So, sorry, I'm making this with uh, Scapia's Merino Soft Brush. And so I'm marling two yarns together. Merino Soft Brush, that's the thicker yarn. And um, Scapia's uh, Rhythm Mohair. And oh, it's just creating this beautiful fabric. I have gushed about it in previous episodes, but I just love this. I love it so much. And I hope it will be quite a, uh, well, just an oversized sweater. I hope so. Um, I hope that I haven't made it too fitted. Um, but yeah, I think my calculations are Correct, um, and I have started the back as well, and I've done quite a bit. So, um, yes, I've almost finished the back. I think.
think just uh, two inches or so, five centimeters. Um, yeah, so this is the mohair I'm using. It's this beautiful fuchsia color. Uh, it's KP's uh, Rhythm Mohair in the Jitterbug colorway and the um, Merino Soft Brush. Uh, I am using from Scapius is the Van Dyke colorway. Oops, doorbell. Right, sorry for the um, interruption. Now I have kind of lost my train of thought, so I don't know where I was. So I have almost finished the back and I will be hopefully finishing that this week and then joining the sweater together at the shoulders by using a three needle bind off, um, which may sound uh, very complicated, but it's really easy actually. And then I will be um, knitting the sleeves. I will be knitting them directly from the body and yeah, I think that will make a sweater. Well, I have to see the sides, obviously. Um, yes, so this pattern will be on my blog for free when it's finished. I hope to have it finished in October or November, but it's proving to be a busy couple of months uh, ahead. So yes, it will be online sometime <laughs> this year, but hopefully October or, or November. All right, speaking of garments, I am making a crochet garment, or I have been for the last couple of years. I believe it's two years uh, since I started this, uh, and I have the project in my Granny Square bag, which I got from Scapius. Um, and this is a kind of hint what is inside, <laughs> because... Da, da, da. A huge granny square. Um, so I uh, unearthed this project again on granny square day, which was August 15th. And um, so it's, it's a huge um, granny square coat. And I will put a picture here of what it is intended to look like. It's a pattern by Lana Red Studio. Um, and I fell in love with this coat when I saw it and I just had to have it. Um, so the large square goes on the back <laughs> and there will be smaller squares down the front uh, and uh, for the sleeves. And those will not be granny squares but sunburst squares. Um, so I will show you a couple of them and I've made all of them with Scapius Soft Fun which is one of my all-time favorite yarns it is a mixture of a um, of cotton and acrylic which makes it um, well great for uh, baby makes and you know because it's washable and most people aren't allergic to cotton, so, uh, you know, it's good for uh, people who have wool allergies uh, because this doesn't contain any wool, but is very soft. Um, more squares. Um, I am using some of the solid colored um Scapy Soft Fun, which is just called Scapy Soft Fun, and this is the Scapy Soft Fun denim. It's kind of uh, uh, washed out in places, so it's uh, darker and lighter. Um, no, I don't have any. Yes, this is also denim. Yeah, so pretty. I like this one, uh, the denim one. And uh, I also have Scapius Soft Fun Aquarelle. Um, Aquarelle is Dutch for watercolor. And 
a lot of white and uh, the dye is kind of uh, spotty, blotchy. Um, so it, it, it looks like watercolor or like paint splatters. Um, oh, you might be able to see it better on this one. So it's really nice actually. It's kind of a stonewashed effect actually. But um, yes, so I've been using those. Uh, so this is the aquarelle and the last row around. Um, and I believe I have made 30 squares so far, but I need to make 48. <laughs> so I still need to make um, a bunch. Um, and after a while, it's uh, difficult to pick colors for each round. So after a while, I just tend to copy the ones that I really like. Um, I'll, I'll just make a second one of that. For example, this one. I love this one. Yeah, but these colors are super bright. Um, so they're just a lot of fun, but I'm not sure when I will actually wear this coat, this cardigan, but we'll see. I mean, it could work. And so this large granny square, I've had to turn um, the direction in which I crocheted. I had to um, change it a couple of times um, because, uh, and I didn't know how to fix this yet, uh, with the granny square, if you just keep working, the corners will turn after a while. Um, and that's not really nice. So you can see it a little bit that the center is kind of turning. Yeah, you can see it just very slightly. Um, and that is why sometimes you have to switch from the right side to the wrong side of your work and then just uh, crochet around that way in order to counter the uh, turning. But someone said that if you if you attach your yarn in a different place every time, uh, so not on the same corner every time, that it would stop turning. So I need to check that out because that would be an even better fix because I don't really like the back side of crochet. So you can see here, so this is the front, but here there's a wrong side row, round, and here as well, I think, no, that's the right side. So this one is wrong side, and then here I did a wrong side row, round again. Um, yes, so I'm going to, I'm going to try with a, with a future project since this granny square is finished um, if attaching your yarn on a different spot on the round makes a difference for the turning um, yeah so for this project I'm not in every, any hurry because you know I've been also I've been working on this already for two years um, I'm not making any promises and as to when I finish it, but it's just a nice and relaxing project. I don't really have to think about it. Um, it's not my own design. It's it's just nice and relaxing to follow somebody else's pattern, um, especially if it's as simple as this. It's just one big granny square and a bunch of um, sunburst squares. Um, Yes, just really easy. I do have a pattern for a modified Sunburst Square on my website. You can find it on there for free. Um, the modification being that I added one extra uh, round in there. So this one is just a four round um, square, which is the original one. Uh, but on my blog, I also have the instructions for the modified sunburst square blanket, uh, sunburst square, and I have um, 
um, I use those to uh, customize a wardrobe closet of mine and I thought it was so fun to so I had this wardrobe closet with different um, with small windows and I put different uh, squares in the windows and yeah, it's really fun just go and check out that uh, free pattern on my blog it also has pictures of the uh, wardrobe closet um, sadly I had to take it apart when we left that apartment because that wardrobe closet was it was just so old um, and we had to um, it couldn't leave the apartment intact so we had to um, take it um, apart yeah so we had to take it apart um, and we couldn't really it together again so anyway yeah so now I have the squares and I'm thinking to make a uh, small cushion with those but anyway lots of uses for summer squares and they're super fun to make oh and I'm using a full four millimeter crochet hook with my Scipius soft fun yarn um, Yes, it's really nice. Four millimeter crochet hook is my favorite size to use. It is, it's not too big, but it's not too small. So perfectly, it's it's the Goldilocks size of uh, crochet hooks for me. Um, not too big, not too small. It's just right. <laughs> All right, for my next project, for my next work in progress i picked a fun pattern from the crochet in the city book uh, which is a crochet book by anna marie bentham who is anna marie's hag blog um, and anna marie's crochet blog on instagram uh, it's a book in english and in dutch and i am making so um if you want to check out the full review of this um crochet book then please go and view my podcast episode number 38 I think if if it's a different one I'll correct myself down below um so I am making these fun coasters yes yeah, so these ones so pretty um so as I said um during the review the book itself is more like a lookbook of the, uh, of, the, the of the different patterns and the material list and um, crochet charts if if uh, if you need them and the patterns the written patterns are in um, uh, are you can take them out of the book um, so they're a small leaflet and um, I took that out and put it in my project bag and it was super easy because I didn't have to carry around this big book uh, but I could just pick the leaflet and read the pattern out from that so um, I made a couple well one and a half <laughs> coasters with Scapius Linen Soft which is a beautiful yarn this is, um, so the label is white, you can't really see the text, Scape Use Linen Soft. So it's a linen blend, it's um, linen, cotton and acrylic, um, and they have beautiful colors. And I am using them to make these coasters, or more like doilies actually. Um, I think mine are turning out slightly bigger than the pattern says, but I really don't mind. Uh, I might just make a few and pin them on my wall. They're so cute. Uh, this is what still attached to, to the ball. This is the second one I'm making. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really look like much yet. But I'm really enjoying this. I uh, was crocheting on these um, one day when it was super hot outside and I couldn't really work with any of the other projects 
I, I had going at the moment since they were, you know, too warm, you know, it was the mohair sweater or, uh, or a woolen project or, yeah, and then the linen side is just a really nice yarn to work with when it's hot outside and um, yeah this is really cool on your hands and I love the colors of Linen Soft. I have made two tops with this yarn before um, all crocheted and I made a set of coasters before uh, which I've knit so you can also knit with this yarn. Um, and actually, uh, someone knit a top from the uh, Pom Pom Quarterly issue, uh, which was all about stripes, and they knit one of the tops in Linen Soft, uh, and it looked gorgeous. Uh, it was this um, yellow and, um, I think yellow and white striped top. Really, really pretty. Um, so yes, you can definitely knit with with this yarn, with Capes Linen Soft. Um, it's washable, you can wash it on 40 degrees Celsius, perfect. Um, yeah, I believe that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, so enjoying these. Again, this is just a fun project on the side. Um, just making them for fun. Yes, I like them. <laughs> Yes, so I'll be making a few more of those. All right, I'm going to explain a little bit about the um, thing I have in the background here. I have um, explained it on my uh, first Instagram live that I did last weekend. Uh, this is the, um, I have painted with watercolor the numbers one uh, until a hundred and um, it's for the 100 day challenge by the business bakery and i will cross off one number each day um and the thing is that you have your goal um you're working towards a goal and you know everybody's working towards their own personal goal and you have to to do these um micro actions every day um so for me uh, my goal is to um, work full-time on my designs um, and you know to be able to quit my day job um, that's a huge goal but it is actually attainable so i was really inspired because um, um, the 100 day goal so some of the previous participants have been able to do amazing things like uh, save up enough money to buy a new car or to um, to uh, finance the wedding of their dreams or to go on a big holiday or uh, to lose that amount of weight or to run that many kilometers and you know just huge goals and th um, the thing is that if you do small steps every day that you're going to want to do more and more and more and um, and one of the big motivators uh, is to visualize it. So I have put a big calendar up there uh, so I can cross off each day uh, when I've finished my micro action for that day. So yeah, I thought I should explain that because you're probably wondering what it is. Yeah, so we've started in uh, on September the 1st, so we're still in the first week um and it runs until december 9th so we'll see if i can attain my goal probably um i, I want to say probably not but it just sounds so unattainable but um i'm gonna make it work i'm gonna do my best <laughs> yeah so um I've been doing, uh, I've been promoting my patterns, I've been uh, promoting my Patreon uh, page where I upload exclusive tutorial videos um, that aren't available anywhere else, you know, exclusive. Um, 
and now I'm doing a whole series on how to fix your knits so how to fix mistakes in knitting um, how to pick up drop stitches how to drop stitches in order to fix mistakes um, how to fix a mistake in color work how to rip back your knitting uh, how to unknit like how to um, rip back just one row you can uh, it's better if you just unknit uh, or knit back so yeah I've been doing this whole series on there and um, to really help my patrons just develop their knitting skills um, and I will do some crochet uh, videos as well of course but uh, I've just um, I've just been doing this for a one month and I've been blown away by the results and by the enthusiasm of my patrons already and um, it's just super fun so um, yes so a big part of my goal is to grow um, my patreon page and um, yes because it has so much potential it's already such a fun community uh, we have uh, 14 patrons right now uh, yeah it's just uh, it now it's still you know manageable um, but uh, yeah I, I just I'm looking forward to it being a huge community and people learning from each other and um, uh, that also keeps me motivated to keep posting uh, helpful tutorial videos um, yes and uh, for my uh, first upcoming crochet video I am planning to do a little tutorial video on the breeze blocks shawl uh, so some people have expressed um, that they would need some or they that they would like some more help with the stitch pattern um, how to get your loops um, that they're not very stretched out um, how to get the um, foundation row uh, right so it's not too tight but not too uh, loose and um, yeah I thought to do a tutorial video on that so first I'm gonna finish the Fix Your Knits series. I have a couple more videos planned but after that I will do a uh, video on how to um, crochet the stitch in the breeze box shawl. Yes, so last thing I have received a fun um, package in the mail and this was actually a birthday present from my boyfriend. Uh, it was my birthday two or three months ago uh, but we ordered it on my birthday but it arrived this week and um, uh, the maker I will show you first and I will explain later so uh, I got two stitch markers in the mail and they are so cute they are the cutest thing ever so, <laughs> so small. It's a little cup of tea. It's so small. I'm not even sure if it will focus. But, um, it's a little cup of tea by Sucre Sucre Miniatures. And this is her famous rose tea. So it has a little painted rose on the cup uh, and on the saucer two lumps of sugar and of course the tea and it even has a little swirl in there uh, and this one is hot lemon tea I believe and it's a beautiful blue cup with a slice of lemon and also some sugar and some flowers on the cup oh, and it's just so cute I love the detail although the actual you know the tea is very sticky and I think it ran out because the bottom of this cup is also really sticky so I'm going to have to um, like get rid of that 
somehow. I thought maybe put clear nail polish on it to see if that helps. Uh, so we ordered these two months back, but uh, Chelsea had um, the maker of these uh, progress keepers uh, from Super Secret Miniatures. Uh, she had a little um, tragedy in her family as uh, the house of her parents burned down. Um, so, of course, she wasn't able to send the orders on time, but I totally understand. So, um, I just wanted to say that because it's not normal that you wait so long for her uh, order to arrive. So, yeah, but beautiful, beautiful progress keepers and I'm really happy to have some in my collection. Um, because I'm really into progress keepers as of late and uh, I just really like how they motivate me to uh, knit more, crochet more and um, yes, it works great and um, I also use it uh, because I, I take projects with me to work to, um, to knit or crochet during my lunch break and um, uh, usually they will ask me uh, how long does it take you to x x x just they always want to know how long does it take you um, to knit a sweater or to crochet this shawl or and then I actually want to tell them it's not about that it's not about how much time it takes up it's it's about you know just doing something with your free time. I mean, yes, I put hours and hours and hours in this sweater, but, you know, you browse uh, hours and hours on your phone or you watch hours and hours of uh, TV shows and what do you have to show for it, right? So, because usually when I tell them like, oh, this sweater will take me uh, three months to knit, they are shocked at how long it takes while you know they just don't understand <laughs> they just don't so uh because i'm not just working on that sweater i'm working on a million things at the same time so when i take a project and i uh, put a progress keeper on it and then I just knit during the lunch break. I also eat, don't worry. I also eat. <laughs> um, and then at the end of the lunch break, some will say, oh, did you crochet that much in this half an hour? I say, yes, it is actually fast, but you know, you crochet maybe one hour a day and not even on the same project. So it may seem like it takes a long time but yeah but i don't think i will ever be able to explain the joys of knitting and crochet to muggles right <laughs> they're just muggles um yeah but ugh, i always think it's so funny like some of them say like so why didn't you just buy a sweater from the store you know they have them already uh, things people say who can't knit yeah okay I've been babbling on for too long and I still have a massive to-do list so I'm going to get cracking on that since it's already uh, half past five um, so thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. And please check out my other videos. I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.